We are looking at the Computer Application Technology or CAT Paper 1 from November 2019 for Grade 12. This is the BRAC exam and we are dealing with the third question which is the spreadsheet or Excel question. So here's the spreadsheet question, question 3 and I've opened up three stats already. And the key to the spreadsheet question, make sure you're working on the right worksheet. So they say we're working in the foreign worksheet. So let's make sure that when we go to it that we are, yep, here we are in the foreign one. That is correct. So 3.1, format cells A1 to R3. We must merge them. Do not center the heading. So we must merge them. So let's go do that. So A1 to R3. I think that's what they said. A1 to R3. We must merge but not center the heading. So we still want it on that side. So I'm going to merge it. But this is merge and center. So I'm just going to merge the cells so that it doesn't merge and center. There we go. And they also wanted me to increase the font size of the heading to 26. So let's make, so we selected it. So let's make it a 26. There we go. Boom. There we go. Okay. So that's easy enough. 3.2, change the tab color of the foreign worksheet to the standard purple color. So I went in doubt, just right click, right click on the tab. Ooh, tab color, and we want to go to the standard purple. I think that's the standard purple there. Boom. So there we go. So you can't see it unless you click away from it. If you click away, you can see it's purple now. Okay, so that's how you know that it's been done. You can extract. Change one South African Rand to five Indian rupees. Insert a formula in B17 to convert the amount in rupees in C17 to an amount in South African Rand. Insert a formula in B. Okay, so let's have a look. So we put in a formula in B17 that converts the value in C17 to the amount in Rand. So that's one to five. So let's go have a look. So let's go to B17. So I'm going to come here to B17. B17 over there. So we must convert that number to rands. And to do that, they said one South African rand equals five rupees. So that is currently rupees. Looks like it is. So we want to convert it to rand. So therefore, we must say equals that value divided by five. Okay. Because that's already in rupees. So if it was rands, we would times it by five. But now because we're going from rupees to rands, we divide it by five. And we should get a value of about 9,000 if I check correctly. There we go, 93. Uh, except for this is rupees. We want to change that to a to South African Rand. So I'm going to change that format cells. Let's make it to South African Rand. So the currency, we don't want that symbol. We want a Rand for South Africa. So let's go find Rand. It'll probably be down the bottom. Do, do, do. Yeah, South African Rand. Let's go to South Africa. There, English South Africa. Boom. We'll use that one. Thank you. Boom. There we go. Rand South African. 3.4, modify. So change cell C74. So we can't change, we can't rewrite it. We must change what's currently there to calculate the grand total by adding the total income for continents, continents in column C. So basically all of them. So let's have a look. C4. 74 so let's go down to c74 all the way down boom there's c74 so we want the grand total of all the continents okay so if i click here you can see there's a sum of different blocks so it's got that block plus that block oh this one looks like it's missing that one that one so all the totals have been added so obviously this one's missing. So number 52. So I'm going to come over here, put a comma and just add that block C52 so that it's included in the calculation. That was a tricky little question, a little devious one. Okay. 3.5. Insert a formula in D8 to determine how many tourists from the USA visited the Taj Mahal in 2016. Two marks. How many tourists from the USA visited the Taj Mahal in 2016? So let's go look in D... 6 d6 there okay so we're going to work out how many for the us well, that, that's the total for north america and that's the canada component so if you look at the it's basically those numbers added together equals that number so they to get this one that'll obviously be the total and if you just exclude the canadians i think that should give us the right answer there okay 3.6 
columns G and H contain the change in the number of tourists from each year, from one year to the next. Okay, we want conditional formatting to H17 to H32 to automatically display the number in a green font. So green font. If the 1718 change is greater than the 1617 change, so the 1718 is bigger than the 1670 so it's gone up basically it's increased okay so h17 to h32 so h17 so there we go h17 to h32 so that's there we go that's the cells that we want to apply conditional form and we want it to be in green font if this value is bigger than that value if the change is increased so we're going to go apply conditional formatting we're going to put a new rule and we want to based on a it's based on a formula basically so we first of all we want a green font so the font must be green so i'm going to click a green font there we go okay so what is the rule that's if so we i'm just going to do for if this block is greater than that block now do you see it's put conditional formatting so it's going to look at h17 every single time for all of them i actually want it when it goes down to yeah i must look at h18 so i'm going to take those question those uh, those dollar signs out so that when it goes down it refers to h18 and so on so i'm doing this for the first block but it'll do h18 g18 h19 g19 and so on. let's see if that works let's click okay boom so let's look. So that value, yeah, that is, I know it's a, it doesn't look, but it's a negative value. There, you see 12 is bigger than 9, so it doesn't change that one. Yes, it looks like it's working. There we go. Okay, there we go. Done. 3.6. Let's move on to 3.7. India Tourism will implement an advertising campaign in other countries based on the number of tourists that visited it. So we look at column D, E, and F. The advertising campaign will implement as follows. Regular... So we must, I think we need to display the text regular or strong, but we want to do a nested if. So regular, if there was an increase in the number of tourists between that year and that year, and strong if there was a decrease. So why do they want a nested if? What's the third option? Ah, oh, there's the third. So it's regular if it's between those two, but it's strong if it's either that one or that one. So that's the three options. So it's regular if it's both of them, and strong if it's either in that one or it's in that one. So let's see how we're going to do this one. So sell r7 so we're going to do this step by step so it's regular if it's but if there's an increase between 16 to 17 and 17 to 18 so both of those then it'll be regular and we're looking at r17 so let's go to r17 so there we go r17 so we're going to use an if statement if if there was an increase if the increase in the number of turns between so we're looking at d e and f Okay, so that's what we're looking at, DF. So if there was an increase between 16 and 17, so 17 must be bigger than 16. That's what we're looking at. So 17, if 17 is bigger than 16, then there was an increase in the 1. Now, I can't say that it's regular yet until I've checked that it's also an increase from that one to that one. So I'm going to put another if statement here. So now we're going to check the second condition and the second condition is if this one was bigger than that one then we know that that's true and that's true so therefore it would be regular okay but if it's not regular if that's not bigger than that if it's not regular than that then it's still bigger the one at least went up so then it's still strong in the case strong and that's the end of the first if statement inside and if it's not that one then i think the other option is to say strong but that doesn't tell us if that one is that one's bigger than that one i feel like there's like a third let me read the question again if the regular was an increase in ah oh, if the strong if there was a decrease oh, okay so that makes sense okay that makes it a bit easier decrease okay so it's strong if there was a decrease in any of the years ah oh, there this makes sense then so this means there was an increase in the one option and there was an increase in the other option then it's regular because it was increased for both of them if it's not for this one, then that means there was a decrease in the one, which means it's strong. And if it's not that one, there was a decrease in that one, so that's why it's strong. 
Ah, there we go. So that would work. Another way of doing it, if we did it over here, another way we could do it is the following. We could say equals if, and we could probably use an and. This is not using nested ifs though. If we said and, and means both conditions must be true. If this condition is bigger than that condition, that's my one option. And this condition is bigger than that condition. So if D is greater than E, and E is greater than F, that means there was an increase in both of them. If that is true, which means and means they're both true, then it's obviously regular. And if it's neither, that means it's, it's a false. It means one of them is, is obviously going down, which means then it would be strong. So that would be a way of doing it without a nested F. That would also give you similar results. Mm, very tricky. So let's go to work in the country worksheet. So let's go work in the country. So let's go to, yeah, we're going to go click on country. And we want to do, what do we want to do? We want to change the chart so that it appears as follows. So we want to delete the F or the 2017 series. That's the first thing we want to do, 2017 series. So I'm going to right click and select the data. And we want to click on 2017 and I'm going to remove it. That's the first thing I'm going to do. So there we go, I removed it. Did I apply it? So I don't think I applied it. Select data, click on 2017, remove it. Click OK. There we go. So there we go, we removed it. That's the first thing we did. What else did they want to do? Format the minor grid lines to a transparency of 60%. So format the minor grid line. So I'm going to click over here and format the plot area. And we want to change the grid lines, the minor grid lines. Do we see grid lines anywhere? No, let's click on the grid lines. There we go. We're on the grid. I'll click to the grid lines. We want the minor grid lines and we want the transparency to be 60%. There we go. So 60% transparency. Is that what they wanted? So I just clicked on the grid lines and I got to that option. Format the minor grid to transparency 60. Change the legend text series 1 to 2016. So if we look there, you see it says series 1. So that's also the data. So format, select the data. Um, that's series one that must edit that, that must be 2016. There we go. So we changed that to 2016. That was easy and full and stack 2008 series with the three Taj picture stored in the examination. So we want that Taj picture to be there. So let's just have a look. Our numbering looks all fine. I think so this, I'm going to click on the gray blocks. And see the bubbles is on all of them and we're going to format that series with a fill of a picture and we're going to go insert a picture quickly let's go find a picture from a file and there is the three picture we want to insert it and we want it to be stacked we don't want it to be stretched we want it to be stacked so let's click on stack does that look like our chart yeah, it looks like it. Eh? Do they want me to change that? That is 2018, eh? 2018 is the stacked, yes. And there we go. I think I'm done. I think that's question three done. If you've excelled at this video, then do us a favor and click on that subscribe button. Leave a like, leave a comment. We'd love to hear from you. Go look at our playlists for the other videos in the series. And remember, don't do it the long way. Do it the Mr. Long Way.